Wow, I think I'm live. If someone just in chat, tell me that I'm definitely live, please. Any response? Can anyone hear me? There's actually a lag. I didn't realise how much of a lag there was. (laughs) 
Let's see. So, I am live, excellent. Do you know there's actually like a two or three minute lag between me talking and then the chats appearing? So that is really good to know. So thank you everybody for coming along. I'm amazed how many people there are on here. And I hope the audio is better than my test this afternoon where I had two microphones going. And quite frankly, it was awful. So I've turned one off and let's get going. Whew. Well, first live stream ever. It's really brilliant to be here. The, just, the chat is going wild. There's so many people. So if I miss talking or miss saying anybody has sent me a question, just keep repeating it till I notice it. Um, oh, how is, hmm. Wow, I can just see chats. I'm just gonna keep talking for a bit until everything settles down. I'm not quite sure why there's a lag. I don't know if it's just, I mean, the Mac is hissing like mad, sat here in my laptop. Everything's streaming through, but I've got two cameras. It may just be, it can't cope, so. Right, so what do I want to do with a live stream? I do so much stuff on video, but Instagram, Facebook, whatever, are so hard to answer questions, to talk to people, to get feedback. I love my interactions with patrons. I recently just started doing tutorials and it is great chatting to people who are modeling. I don't know about you, but I love talking about modeling. And for the last two years, I just haven't had a chance. It's, um, it's just so difficult to get out and about with all the various lockdowns and things. So I'm really, really excited to be able to talk to people, to just have this amazing opportunity to see what you think and interact with you guys. <laughs> it's interesting that apparently my two cameras even have lag. That is so funny. <laughs> that is really funny. So if I wave here, does it not wave? That is, yeah, anyway. So I'm finding it quite bizarre to chat to a camera and try and look at chat. So if I just come out of kilter a few times, it's my first time, I'll get it down pat, I think, as we go. Um, and there's just so many people, I won't manage to say hi to everybody, but I've seen people from New Zealand, Chile, I know there's people from Germany, all around the UK and all over the US. So thank you for joining and um, apparently, um, yeah, okay, I'll get there. The chat is going wild and I'm really, really struggling with this. Whew. So first live stream, I thought I'd do something I've been wanting to do for absolutely ages. And I know I started out doing mostly Model Railroad and I've done quite a lot of sci-fi this year. But one thing I did as a model railroad that I never finished and it sticks with me was a swamp railroad. And I may come back to it, but I have two model railroads on the go and a third one planned. And neither of them are progressing particularly quickly because of YouTube and all the other stuff I've been doing. So I wanted to do a Dagobah swamp scene. I just, I like the idea of swamps, something really creepy about all that mist and I just wanna see how it works with the live stream with something that I think will be fairly interesting to a wide range of people. Okay, so swamps. I, I wanted to start off with planning this week because I wanted your guys' input on some of the techniques you might wanna see, um, how it might come together. And I always do a lot of planning up front. So, um, ooh, um, so I'm just going to look at the chats for a second and then I'm going to talk a little bit more about the diorama. It's, it's really funny. I can, it's, so I can't log into OBS and the streaming service and YouTube and flip between the two. So I'm on OBS and so when things go, they go really fast and um, it, it's fascinating. So, um, this is really bizarre. It's so weird to have so many of you here. So let me get going, right. Swamps, planning, Dagobah. I'm actually, whilst this is all going, I'm gonna catch up on this. I'm gonna play you a little video, I hope. 
let's see if I can find it. It may even just be a photo slideshow. I know I put a, there we go. So I put a photo slideshow on of just a couple of key parts of the um, Dagobah swamp scene. I'm gonna leave that plain for a minute. So you get an idea for those of you who may have escaped Star Wars and what Dagobah is all about. Um, you know, just what is it that's so exciting about this scene? Um, it's, uh, you know, it's a swamp. What's exciting about it? I went to a swamp once. I went to um, just Georgia. I was at um, a NMRA convention in Atlanta and I met up with somebody, Neil Carnaby's wife, and she took me to a swamp and we went overnight and it was really odd. It was not like I thought a swamp would be. It was a bit boggy. It wasn't really flooded. There were loads of spiders in the trees. It was quite creepy. And it was just, you know, it, it just didn't really live up to expectations. And I saw Mushrat Ramble in person in Florida. It's a great railroad swamps. But when you look at something like Dagobah going in the background here, it's just such a beautiful swamp scene. I wanted to be able to do the swamp that's in my head, not the ones I've seen in real life. And I've been to a Louisiana, we were around a bayou, but it just, it wasn't creepy, it wasn't misty. And we saw alligators, they are scary, but it just wasn't quite the same. So this is my opportunity to do one of the best swamps I think there is. So let's have a look at chats for a second. Um, so we've got Indiana, Oh, people, so that's Ken airbrushing while he's doing the live stream. Hi to Ken, hi to Nathan. Um, I am doing the Dagobah swamp scene. I just feel it's a great scene and it will make a great model. I'm a little nervous about modeling live because it gives things to, to kind of go wrong. Um, I'm, I probably won't need to do resin because it's a swamp. There's not a lot of visibility, so that's good. Um, and, you know, it, it's, got to fit in this sort of section on my workbench or you know it won't fit on the live stream i've seen someone just said there's some live um there's some like behind the scenes of dagobah sets i've seen one or two black and white photos they're not that much of a set actually they're quite simplistic in some ways so hopefully i'll, I'll go and dig a few more out and um hopefully we can get something that sort of evokes that scene in quite a small space. Oh, so Timber Surf has been to where the scene was filmed. That must be amazing. I'm not even quite sure where it was. I presumed it was a back lot. <laughs> There's a swamp in my head much of the time, YouTube. Yeah, I know that feeling. I'm not sure the turtles survive on Dagobah, but we'll see. I don't know about live fog. Um, it's a question from Kim. I would like to do it, but my worry is the best sort is actually a water vapor and it might, it might just make the scenery a bit damp. So I did try it once and some people managed it on the Great Model Railway Challenge. They did a really great job, but it was this honking great terrarium thing. So I need to just do some experiments probably. A fog machine itself goes up too much. This is very low, the fog. So we need to make sure it kind of sits at the bottom and that's the issue. Um, so, hi to Paul from the South Wales. Lighting, says John, is that a question about the diorama? Mysterious the swamp is. What's my favorite cheese? Ooh, mm, torn between goat cheese and Stilton. Ultrasonic Mist Makers, definitely the one from Timber Surf. Now we wait four days for the dry part. Live videos are actually really good because there is a week's drying time between everything. So you just have to chunk it up probably. Um, and you know, it's got a week to dry out at least, maybe more. Dang, was it? Oh, so it was done in the UK then, if Leavesden's in the UK, isn't it? Um, <laughs> Aaron, yeah, looking forward to something going wrong. <laughs> um, I do try and edit out the really, really dead ends at my videos because you don't need to see two hours, three hours, four hours of me just not getting something to work but I do tend to leave the mistakes in because they're really helpful to learn from. I certainly feel that when I've looked at other people's, I learned a lot from um, say Luke Town when he used uh, murky water and it melted his phone base. I learned a lot from that. 
about you know how hot the resin can be. I haven't volunteered for Pendum, but I've definitely been there a couple of times and their water, just all of their modeling is stunning. One of my friends is a trustee there. It's really, really good. Um, how do you think you'll light it? That's interesting. I might do a blue light from one side because um, there is a blue light behind Yoda. If you look at the pictures, there's one scene, especially where there's a blue light behind him. Um, so you could do that and then I'll probably just leave, I'm thinking two sides and then the rest will be lit from the front. But it's something to um, just think about. How do you like things? What are the backdrops going to be? And because we're doing planning this week, that's actually going to be one of the things we think about today. Um, yeah. So I might want to try cotton balls for the mist pulled out to get a wispy look. I've thought about that. I've tried polyester as well. My cotton wool that I bought was really lumpy. I was very disappointed. Don't buy cheap cotton wool from Amazon is all I can say. Um, leaves and where Harry Potter. Right, so dry ice cubes. I, I think I noticed quite a lot of people use fire extinguishers on the Great Model Railway Challenge to get dry ice, but it's not repeatable. So the question is, do you want your mist just to be there for photo effects or do you want it to be permanently on the diorama? And that's a question I need to work out. Um, I do have a, an e-cigarette generator, not that I smoke, but I bought it for doing things, but it's quite directional. And again, I haven't got it wired up. Um, you can literally just buy the vaporizer bit and then put glycerine in and it will create a fog. It's quite useful. Um, I have never made a model for film or TV. I almost did a commercial with someone and then lockdown happened and they pulled all of their European advertising. So hmm. not very impressed. That would have been fun. So let's just talk a little bit. Cotton wool. Okay, so I, I'm just going to stop the, looking at the chat for a second and just talk a little bit about what goes into planning. So for me, I've watched the scene quite a few times where the X-Wing comes out of the water. I've looked at the background. I've had a quick look. Yoda actually moves. Now, this is going to sound a bit funny, but when he first does his little scrunch face and I'm going to move it thing, he's standing on a bed of brown leaves. When he's two seconds later, there he is, he's just starting, he's just scrunching now on the screen. And then a minute or two later, he's up on a branch. So, and, and then the X-Wing kind of arrives and suddenly there's space for it, whereas before there wasn't. So I think the set is slightly movable and they do move slightly during the scene. The other thing that thankfully we never see is it actually coming out the water. We see it, and apparently this is because they didn't want to use too many water effects, they were being quite cheap on the model. So there isn't a huge amount of water gushing out. I think there would be a lot more water and I'm very tempted to do um, more water just because I think it's, um, it's a better effect. But the trouble is, if you're doing Star Wars and you do it differently, sometimes the fans get quite upset. I left the second Ahsoka lightsaber there because online it said she probably left it there. And it's my number one comment followed closely by Darth Vader's um, light, lightsaber is red on my Clone Wars diorama. So, you know, it's, it's one of those things. I need to get it right. So, planning. I'm gonna have, um, I'm just gonna shift this now to my workspace. Here we go. So this is an A2 piece of paper and I would like the diorama to fit on here. And my first, decisions is what scale to do it in and I want it to be quite big so before this and um, this is on a sheet because I haven't actually cured it yet I printed out an x-wing um, so this bit isn't cured and I printed out Luke I can zoom in but it's never that where you think it's going to be so I printed out Luke and Yoda. Okay. <laughs> fans ruin everything. Some fans are really supportive. <laughs> Just to say that some of the Star Wars ones are very, very, very um, possessive about their fan base. And I get that. You have a vision of how things are and you want it to be right. And, and Nathan, I like to do fantasy scenes that are real. I like things to be realistic. 
um, my the number one compliment you can give me is that looks just like a photo or that looks just like the scene you're copying. So I do like realism. So I got these particular and this is an I had it on. Um, I normally have this camera on manual focus when I'm doing stuff because it is awful at focusing. But anyway, um, it will eventually get there if I leave it long enough. I think the trouble is because it's not actually recording. It doesn't autofocus. Let me just try it. There's um, something really bizarre about when you live stream because your camera is not actually recording. So some of the stuff it would normally do just doesn't kick in. So I wanted a certain scale where I could see Yoda. And if you look at my little finger, I was originally going to do 164th, but he was so titchy. I'm like, no one's going to see him. He's the important part of um just this whole diorama is about yoda lifting the x-wing so the x-wing yoda and luke are really important and if they're so small you can't see them but then the x-wing gets too big so in the end sorry those that are voting for 187 i just at 187 he'd be half that height so i decided to go with 148 so i mean bear in mind how short yoda is this is Luke, it's 148 scale, it's Americano scale. Um, I think it's going to be a good scale to fit everything in, and I've got an A2 sheet. Um, we'll get on to painting these Brockwell Lane later. Um, I, I, I need to do it fairly early on to just get the um, the kind of well, I need to get the X Wing at least assembled and painted, so there'll be a whole session where I paint them. Um, yeah. Talking of big baby Yoda, Roman, there's a cosplay going around of a full-size person dressed up as baby um, Grogu, and it's quite freaky seeing him so large, as large as people. So these, um, these two models, the 3D models, um, oh, I need to work up, Admiral Bell's a DL just so they turn the X-Wing around. Oh, they do things like that. So this, I think I paid two pound for Yoda, and this is a Kenner file. Um, and so if you were to look very carefully at Luke, his legs are actually those detachable ones that are like, I don't know, mini figs or something. So they're not that great. Um, yeah, it's, I will probably have to fill him a little bit to when I've painted him. I print in clear just because I can see the bits in the bottom. It's quicker print normally in clear because the UV light gets through quicker. So I generally am using clear 90% of the time and I just leave it in there. But it is a nightmare till you prime them to seal the nubs. Now I've cured these and taken the supports off already. But I, and I've done two of each in case one of them didn't print. But I haven't done that for the X-Wing. So let's just come back out a bit. Um, this is my X-Wing in pieces. Um, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's still a little bit sticky with resin print, so I'm trying not to touch it with my bare hands. You should be wearing gloves when you touch uncured resin, but I like to take the supports off in when they're still flexible. And at the moment, they're very, everything's very bendy. Once I've cured it, it's very solid and things shatter a bit more. Um, I'll put the links to the STLs, I'll write myself a little note, STLs, I'll put the STL links, I meant to do it and I forgot, of where I got Yoda and Luke from underneath. The X-Wing is off Thingiverse, it's a 1 to 64th scale one, so, you know, the, the, I think I've spent £2 at most on all of them, so it's not that much, um, so it's really good. I'm, I did wonder, mm, no, I'm going to do the X-Wing at the same scale, because... I just have already printed it at the same scale. So, and there we go. So if you look at it without touching it, it's about this big. So if I put it over here, I'm going to put the X-Wing about here and it's going to be just a little bit more clumped in than that here. So that leaves me all this space for Yoda, who's about here, and Luke, who's about here. And I'm sorry, but I forgot to print R2-D2, so... R2-D2, I know it's a Yoda, if you can tell that from this photo, you're doing well. Um, that's an R2-D2, and he's going to sit there um, when I get around to printing him, which I'll do this week whilst I remember. Um, and he's he's a bit higher. I want space around all of this area to do trees. And this area's got to be lower because it's water. Um, 
I don't want it to be a really tall difference between the swamp top of the water and the, the sort of the rest of it because it isn't really when you look at the pictures. So let's see what people are saying. How did I get into the Great Model Railway Challenge? Um, somebody told the producer I would be a great judge because I can talk a lot. Um, yeah, I can talk a lot. <laughs> um, got a shot of the set that looks like it shows the crane tax for moving the X-Wing. I think they cheated a bit on the X-Wing because I think they only had a little bit underwater and then the whole rest of it was always out the water. You never see a part bit coming out. And I'm surprised when they remastered it, they didn't do a nicer shot for that later, but they didn't. Model U are awesome, I totally agree. And I should have a black piece so we could see them better. It's a good idea, I've got a black sheet of paper, but I was gonna write on this in a sec, so I, um, I didn't, but I can put them on these bits over here and um, yeah, they kind of show up. But a black piece of paper is really good. I know they'll be sprayed grey by the time you see them next time. But um, I, yeah, haven't done that yet. So, what is the number one tool that is that? IJAW twenty one. Um, exacto blade, knife. Number one tool, knife. Super. Um. I'm assuming you've partly submerging. I don't know about the X-Wing. So that is a question I um, just need to run through with you guys. X-Wing. So if I've got trees around the back here, trees down the side here, a light source over here somewhere shining sideways, it's gonna be a bit darker here because if you look, there's um, masses of like mangrove roots along this section. Is the X-Wing going to be partly submerged or literally mostly out the water? Um, I, I'm thinking that I want it mostly out just because it's easier to model. And, you know, this is about modelling. If I wanted to do it partially submerged, I would have actually cut off the STLs before I printed them. So they were partly underwater. Um, I think what I want is also the water gushing out of them a little bit more than you saw in the movie, but thankfully the actual movement off, you know, out of the water is off screen. So nobody can tell me it was wrong. And it's, I, I want it with a lot of dripping water, but I think what will be happening is there's landing gear and I think maybe the landing gear will just be leaving the water. But I want it to look mostly suspended because I think that suspended in midair is a really good look um so you know it's it's just about what looks good i think if you can look through under the x-wing there's something very powerful about that um that viewpoint and we'll be able to shoot from this angle through and then this angle through and have two probably back scenes here and here so we'll get a lovely viewpoint through would be my way um yeah so Finiton thinks he would still have the legs underwater so you can still see the but have the water dripping off submerged is the easy option suspended in the air actually you think suspending would be harder I've got this um I use this on my lava so these are a couple of bits of leftover lava and it's warbler it's a clear warbler it's a thermoplastic it's a little bit bendy but I could easily do some quite large streams of water coming from the landing gear areas and just prop it up on bits like this. I've got a whole sheet somewhere, but I could only find these two earlier to demonstrate it. So those bits would work quite well, I think, as a, um, just a way, and then you put water effects down here and you can bend them to any shape you want. Um, yeah, a partially submerged X-Wing wouldn't actually need a deeper diorama if you cut it off. If you didn't do resin, then yes, it would. Um, but I don't think you can really see beneath the water um yeah I, I don't think you can see beneath the water on this swamp you don't really see much it's quite milky and mucky so i think we'll be fine with just having a, a layer of um I'll, I'll get it over in a sec foam for that water big snakes mm, if you put snakes in and they weren't there in the original series trust me the star wars fans will tell me um and aliens is good that's the theme, Yoda is lifting. I think that's very true. 
Yeah, clay plastic rods, the warbler, whatever it is, it's very easy to have clear plastic um, disguise of water effects when it's dripping water. Um, yeah, so mini bricks. Yeah, I saw that. Um, he used resin as well as the vines are definitely the mini bricks one. Um, oh, yeah, I did see that. It and mini bricks does some great stuff, and he uses a lot of resin. Steel wire covered in moss. I think you can use a selection. Um, I like the idea that it's not immediately obvious um, that um, what's holding it up. I like the idea it looks like it might be floating. So I want anything that is actually touching the water to be quite spindly. So there's a bit of a doubt about, gosh, did it really stay up from that? Um, I'm not going to do the monster doing R2. And the reason for that is that you can do too many things in a diorama. Um, so I can perhaps do some, you know, small snakes coming out or whatever, but anything particularly big starts taking away from the main theme, which is Yoda lifting an X-wing. And I think that's what I want it to concentrate on. Um, so It's fun, fascinating how much people know. I mean, who knew there were Komodo dragons in the scene in the movie? I, I, I've looked at it a few times and not seen it. So let's just get some planning on here um, so we can get an idea of what this scene is going to look like. So X-Wing, it's not going to be this big by a long way. So if I put an X-Wing um, roughly somewhere like this, that is a really bad X-Wing. It's got pointy out bits there. Um, I want space around it because I like it to have breathing room um, so that it's not, um, it, it's not too crammed in. My problem is I'm running out of space in the house because I like breathing room with all my dioramas and I think gaps and space is really bad before or after the X-Wing out the water, I like the challenge of partially submerging in clear resin. I like the challenge of partially submerging in clear resin, but I'm not doing that on my first live stream, I think was what I thought. And also, it's a swamp, it's not got clear resin. This is a scene with the yucky water, so you really wouldn't see it under the water, um, Hasta. So I'm not sure that this is the right scene to do partially submerged, but my next but one YouTube video is as a gok from, it's a Gundam coming out the water and you'll see his leg underwater so you, that one will have resin with partially submerged um it's going to be like a leg under there um so yeah and for those who haven't seen the film if you just google yoda x-wing dagobah um there's a like a four minute clip you could go watch of it coming out the i thought i'd put it here as a um one of my options but i guess when i crashed i lost it um just for bringing out um just to see what this is going to be i'll probably put it on the front for the while we're waiting next time so if i put an x-wing here and we put sort of a so this is going to be swampy water i think around here there's definitely going to be quite a lot of swampy water and if we're going to do a mist effect that's what we need to think about is the mist going to be polyfiber cotton wool or is it going to be some kind of machine, either a vape or a water mystifier? Um, and that's a question I need to decide. And I may have a little play. We may just, I've done some things before, so I'll just have a think about what was best. Nathan's asked me, oh, actually, let's go with Brockwell Lane. How do you store and display your dioramas? They're out on bookshelves um, at the moment. The ones that have got snow on have generally got plastic over to stop them getting dusty and running out of space very quickly though. Especially now I've gone full time and I'm producing a lot more. Um, yeah, and I've got a whole loft full of model layout. I've got a kitchen floor full of model layout and I've got a lounge full of stuff and a dining room full of stuff and a house full of stuff. I've got five bookshelves full of dioramas. It's a problem. Do I have, so Nathan asked, I wonder, do you have, do scenery stuff before the water? Is it easier doing the water first and then the scenery to blend it all in? That's a really good question. And I have my preferred way of doing it. 
And I like to do the base layer, foam, whatever it is, a sculpt mold layer if I'm doing something like that. Then I paint it all. And at that point, I do earth. I do an earth coat. I would normally pour resin at that point because resin creeps. And if it creeps too much, I can put more earth down, grass, whatever. I did an oil slick diorama and I didn't have a lot of difference in height between the water and the grass and it just ran through all the grass. Um, so it, it can get away from you sometimes, creeping resin. And then what I'll do then is, the resin might scratch a little, but it's gonna have ripples on it. I do everything else and then I come back at the end and do the ripples and gloss on the resin water. But for this, as it's not gonna be very deep, I'm wondering about using UV resin and just doing a thin skim for gloss and actually just doing a flat painted surface for the actual swamp water because I don't think there'll be any depth. So, um, and yeah, Rex, maybe a bit of both for the mist effect um, because there's mist all the way through. It's not just over the water. If you look, there's mist through all these areas. So it's, it's really important that they sit there. But if you're gonna put a damp like terrarium mister in it could make all your scenery get a bit well as pasta says damp molding um yeah some, some kind of fiber is safer that's for sure um yeah i'm sure veil craft works that everybody i remember luke town on his millionth subscriber video showed off his and his warm cardboard boxes and it's a lot of my wear but i got all them all out recently bought some more bookshelves but then they go dusty when you're on bookshelves um, <laughs> I like the way Rex thinks that I need polyfiber to hide mist effects. Yeah, let's hope that I don't need to hide too much of the scenery. Let's hope it all looks good. Um, so I let's talk a bit about the base. Um, this is going to be the bottom level. Yeah, I think round here. And what I'm going to do? Wait a sec. Oh. I'm going to use this. This is too big to fit in the camera, which is why it's over on the side. Um, it's, let's see if I can get an angle there. Okay. That is about 25 mil, one inch thick, um, dumpster dived XPS foam. So people often ask me, where do I get the, um, sort of stuff that I make things out of. Lockdown has been a real boon. Every single one of my neighbors has had an extension, including both sides and the other side to me are still going all week, bang crash, because they've been doing all the sort of ground works. And builders are brilliant. You say to them, would you mind if I have your offcuts of Celotex or PIR foam or whatever? And every time I walk past a skip, some builder yells at me, oh, I love there's some more in here if you want to come and get it. I have got so much Celotex, it's coming out my ears. Um, I've got a room half full of it. Um, so it's, it's PIR foam, which has a really fancy long chemical name. And basically you can't cut it with hot wire tools. It's flame resistant. In the UK, almost all the insulation you will see builders putting in, um, it's, it's this stuff. It's not the XPS foam, which is expanded polystyrene, not to be confused with the sort of bally one, it's the more dense one. You see that a lot in America and people buy it and they go to Home Depot, because it's American, not Depot, and they buy it. And I go to B&Q here and I never see that stuff for sale. All of our insulation is either the roll stuff that's like fiberglassy type, or it's this stuff and you get from a builder's supply or from a skip. So I don't know, um, yeah. <laughs> I, I ask them. Actually, most of them will dumpster dive for me, YouTube. I don't even need to go into the right dumpster. Um, and hello, Stephen, it's one to 48. So it's American O scale, which is different to British O because British O is one to 43.5. Um, so yeah, it's, it's funny. So anyway, I'm gonna use that one. I've never seen them do the inch one before. I was really pleased when I found a couple of pieces in my stash because most of what I've got now is um, like 100 mil, which is, 10 centimeters, so that's four inches, which I think is the standard for all the walls and floors that they're putting it in. Um, so, 
you know, if you're looking to do a diorama and you're looking for foam, you will need to carve this with a kitchen knife. Um, buy one specially for it because it's really nasty stuff. And the other thing is, I probably won't cut this on camera because the screeching noise is not very nice. Um, and I don't want to make all of you have that sort of down the blackboard effect because it is really quite, yeah, it can be. It comes foil wrapped, this one. I'm going to leave the foil on bottom and top of the water area, I think, because I don't need um, the, if I'm going to do a flat water area, I don't need to carve it. So I can just use one thickness of that for the very base of my diorama. It is, however, very flimsy and I'm a bit worried about that. So the problem is I don't have anywhere to cut wood. I used to have a garage and I turned it into a utility and a little bit of garage where I still cut wood. And then in lockdown, I um, turned it into a 3D print room because I bought a new 3D printer that sounds like a jet engine taking off. It's my Piopoli Phenom, it's so noisy. And even with one door, I just couldn't do anything. <laughs> it was really noisy everywhere. So I now two doors away and the outer door to it's the old door into the garage. So it's a nice thick fire door. And it's, yeah. So I don't have anywhere to cut wood. I have a granite worked up in my kitchen. I am not cutting wood on here. I can promise you that it's granite. I've already super glued something to it and took the top off and I've dropped metal weights and put dints out of it. I'm not in a rush to do anything with my particular wood cutting. So I tend to use um, things like, um, you know, PVC Foamex. It's a foamed PVC board. You can't use it in a laser cutter, but you can cut it with a box cutter. So my box cutter, you know, I sharpen this regularly. Sharpening saves a lot of money. I can use it and just cut it. And it's a really it's got a black glossy finish. It dents easily, but I think that'll go underneath at five mil. I've got an A1 piece of five mil, and then I'll probably do three mil for the back and the sides. And if I'm gonna do a printed backdrop, I'll get it printed at that size. It depends how tall it is, but my printer's not that great, so I'll probably get it printed at the local print shop if it's still open. So, um, let's have a look. PIR foam, polyisocyanurate, it, no idea if it's phenolic. It is definitely the um, the, the main one you find in the UK. Um, I am not cutting it in my roll top bath either. Admiral, I'm sorry. No, no, not my bathroom. Um, I don't want to cut through things. You know, I used to have a jigsaw and you can cut through things. I don't want to cut through any of my nice house. And this is the problem with working from home. I went from working in office and my hobby was in my house to having a full-time job in the house. Every room is full of stuff because when you buy stuff for a project, you don't use it all. And I've got sheets and sheets of dumpster dived foam and off cuts and everything. Um, on the 3D prints, someone further up, I've just rolled off the screen now, asked me, this is the 3D print? I'll just put it back on screen. It's one to 48. It's from Thingiverse. It's scaled there at one to 64th. So you just have to scale it up one, 33, 133% and it will be the right scale. So that's gonna be what I use. I picked it mostly because it fit nicely on this scale. I kind of wobbled around and went, oh, it's about 30 centimeters roughly. That's that's kind of about half the width. It's, it's a nice size. Um, I could use some of the foam to soundproof my printer. I did actually have them in enclosures, but it's so hard to get at things when things go wrong, especially my filament printer that I've had apart more times than I care to think about. So yeah, I took the enclosures out and there's just this heavy door now. Um. <laughs> when you say you lost your first wife, Admiral, I hope you didn't cut while she was in there. Um, yeah, I, I just struggle. I used to cut a lot on the floor and it's just not ideal. And you can do it outdoors, but then I've got to store the sawhorse somewhere and it's about to go into winter and you always want to cut. If I, um, I'm sure I could sort it if I was really worried, but I don't actually use wood. That's how I get around it. Um, it's just easier. MDF's quite heavy. PVC foam board's quite light. It's a little bit less rigid, but actually at that thickness, it's not 
too bad. So I've just gone that way instead. I did try, and I really don't recommend it, my Port de Norway layouts in this, um, tile backerboard, which is foam and cement. You, yeah, you can cut it with a knife, but oh, it's horrendous. No, never do that. What made you start doing dioramas? Um, I can finish them. I am really, I'm gonna be honest, my 12 foot by 12 foot layout scares me because it's so big. It's too hot in the summer, so I can't go up there for quite a lot of the year. And it's too big. I just, there's so much to do on it, I feel daunted. I don't know how people do 60 foot layouts. And I like doing something different a lot. I like trying new things. It's really hard to um, try new things uh, on a layout that's set in the summer in New England. So I decided the diorama is just a land more variety. And I've always done them alongside the model railroad, but in YouTube, it actually suits the YouTube culture a little bit better. So you're seeing a lot more of them than perhaps, um... <laughs> sorry, Admiral burying his wife. I do worry because he definitely lost her as well. Um, running out of story space. I do wonder about selling off my dioramas, but I don't build them to travel. So I'm worried a lot of people are in the US, I, they wouldn't ship across the Atlantic. Um, so I may sell some of them, but the ones I can sell are the smaller ones, which almost defeats the point. I envy people who do stuff like Gundam modeling and they just build loads of Gundam kits because they're so small. Um, someone I was model building with a longer time ago, never called him a friend, he came to me for sanding smooth parts because he didn't want the dust in his house. My house has so much dust. Uh, down right next to me is the Hoover. I use it a lot. Um, yeah, I, I agree, laser. It's just, shipping dioramas scares me. Uh, but North of the Border does them, and I asked him, and he said, people seem not that bothered about gluing on. He does a lot of clay sculpts, gluing back figures and stuff. So there we go. Um, Really enjoying the live stream. I'll talk at the end about plans on the live stream and see what people want, how often people want them. Um, yeah, I really do think the Gundam would be out of place on New England layouts. Um, and thank you, Hillbilly. Um, I would say I was a mistress of something, but I'm not sure dioramas is it. Um, it's, it's interesting how vari much variety. Have I thought about doing some military modelling? I have done military modelling in the past. I have a striker in my dining room I did, and I did a Transformers diorama. Two, actually, both with military on them. So I've done 1 to 35. I like it as a scale. It's a nice scale to work in. Um, yeah, it is nice. One thing um, Stephen's talking about, an electric bread knife. Uh, most builders seem to use reciprocating saws. So if you have one of those, that's what they use to cut it. I've been watching them. Um, I've had a lot of people doing work to watch as well. Have I ever made a Disney themed diorama? Well, Disney make a lot of things, so it's hard. I did Clone Wars, that's a Disney production now. It probably wasn't at the time. So I haven't done a Disney one yet, puppy, burrito, but I suspect it will come at some point. Um, <laughs> I do live here, I sleep here. I pop around to my mum's quite a lot. She's only around the corner. When I want to escape my house, because it's all too much. Um, so I go over there for lunch just to escape in the middle of the day. Um, okay, so back to this. Um, right, let's just think, what else do I need to do in planning? So one of the things I wanted to talk to you about, and I'm gonna move the camera again so everybody hold on to their horses as it moves. So I can't move this any closer. Let's see if I can get a bit more light on it. Um, clippy light. Will you move? Yes, you will. Okay, so I'm just gonna put, prop that light up there so at least you might be able to see it for a second. <laughs> I can't move any closer because it hits my lighting gantry that's up here. Um, just literally there is a lighting thing. And yeah, so this, I want to just talk a little bit about, um, the ropes are definitely too much, Daniel. Um, I just want to talk a little bit about this. Um, it's my Halo diorama from yonks ago. And this is my <laughs> Halo dude. Lighting is now. <laughs> Halo dude. I'm just going to move this back. Right. Okay. That was a nice experiment. There's my Halo diorama. You can go check it out on YouTube. 
Um, it's a series of how to paint um, halos and things. You know, it was uh, quite a while ago now. Mm, I just moved my light in a weird way. There we go. Um, so let me just move this back down here where it's much better lit. You really, oh, no. Everything moves. Do you know, I just have so many lights trying to get all the angles and when you move something, it's just a nightmare. So let me just put that back weird. Anyway, just, um, workbench. Halo. So I did this guy a while ago. This is sixth scale. I saw someone just ask me about what scales I do. I've done probably one to sixth is the largest I've done. And I've done down to about one to one forty fourth. Um, so somewhere I do a lot of range. I like the kind of, I like the scale for people. This was a great scale for a person figure. Um, so this I did without painting. And the whole point of this was he was a no paint, just weathered. He's a little over weathered and I do it differently now. It's just a lot of washes and silver brushing and mud on his feet, really. And he had a little tree that he sat, stood in, which he doesn't actually stand in very easily without string. Um, and yeah, I, I don't like to drill holes in the feet of my models because it's like, oh, I don't want to drill into my perfectly just built model, but then I need a hole to put a brass rod in so we can actually stand on the branch. Um, so there we go. So this diorama and the reason it's so tall, it's based on um, the, if you've played Halo, it's Halo 4, people's least favourite game. I like it because it's got a great emotional arc and it has definitely the best soundtrack of any of the Halos. And I often put the soundtrack on because it doesn't disturb my thinking when I'm working and it's a tense thing I'm working on. And um, it, it, it's very much, uh, there's a scene where you run through a jungle and he's on his little Dyson Sphere place. Um, it is Halo, dude. <laughs> Master Chief. <laughs> um... And so this was from that. It was a scene from that when he was up the tree and you actually run along through the branches of your trees itself. And it's six scale, so the tree had to be big. And I made it out of two things. And when I tell you one of the main inspirations for it and you all go and check it out, you will perhaps be able to see a little bit more where I'm driving out on this diorama. And um, hi to everybody who's just landed. Um, Holly... Rosa. <laughs> Hi, and um, all those other people coming in. So I made him out of cardboard. I think it was coat hangers, but I can't find what I've done with them. It was quite a while ago now. Cellular clay and jute string. And those are more or less the things that I'm proposing to use on this. Um, so, yeah, let's just um, unwrap that for a sec. And what, when I was doing this halo diorama, I thought to myself, what am I gonna do? How am I going to do it? And I Googled and I found Ficton Foo. I'll put the link up on the um, notes that go with this afterwards. Ficton Foo, F-I-C-H-T-E-N-F-O-O. -E -E He's on Instagram. He's making very cute little flocked Ewoks at the moment. And he goes back ages. He's one of my favorite creatives. He did a lot of resin kits. Um, he's done all sorts of things. And he did a whole Dagobah diorama that's very similar to this. Um, so yeah, he inspired me with that. And when you, you look at it, I mean, there's only so many ways you can do a Dagobah scene because you're either gonna do the main viewpoint, oops, not that I'm touching that because it's not cured. Um, the main viewpoint this way, or you're gonna do more of a slanting one. So really the photo should come this way, or you want it to be this way to catch the camera angles they do. Um, so yeah, there's definitely something about the way he did it, and he used celly clay and dupe string. So I went away and used it on my halo diorama. I also used celly clay on my twisted tree I did in sixth scale for some other sixth scale figures I've got. And celly clay's great, it shrinks. You can't put it on too firm a base or it just cracks but it's actually paper mache. And when you're doing a live stream, there's plenty of time for it to dry up. It should be good. But when you're trying to do um, something else, it's, you know, it's annoying because it does take days to dry. 
it came out with a great texture for Bart though. And that's what I like about it. And you can mix it with a bit of PVA that helped. And the juice string was just awesome. So I've got two trees here. Um, and this left hand one is just really jute string and you can twist it and it comes up with a lovely texture. So having done that, and then you can put like glue over it, just normal PVA glue, and it creates this beautiful, beautiful sort of gnarled bark look. And that is what I want to do um, here, just round here. Is craft culture different on that side of the pond? Diorama sim culture, which side of the pond are you on, Corvid? Are you on my side or your side? Because if I Google YouTube dioramas, I don't get trains. I get mini bricks doing Godzilla. I get Gundam and get Pacific Rim. I get loads of the Meg with stuff coming up. Think, just try Googling dioramas. And I think it's just a scene now. And it's very, there's a lot of sci-fi ones and things. I obviously might get something very different to you because it looks at your search history and gives you what it thinks you want as well. Um, so someone asked about prototypes and I saw it go past and I missed it a little and it's quite hard to do a prototype. So if you can get there, brilliant, loads of photos. I have done them, um, and my Port de Norwick is a real prototype scene, and that might come on the live stream at some point in the future. So I do love that research bit and anally sussing out where every brick is and counting them all and putting them on a diorama, because I'm like that. Um, yeah. Okay, so, If we have um, that kind of tree thing going on with the roots down here, so I'm gonna have basically just big trees, I think, along here, and they're gonna be quite tall, and I'm gonna have a, just a printed backdrop or something down this side, and a very technical drawing here, printed backdrop down that side, and more big trees here. And I'm gonna look, they're quite slanty. If you look, their roots start in midair, well, not the roots. Yeah, the roots start in midair. They're quite high, and then you can see through them. Um, less so on this side, but more over here. So I need to spend quite a bit of time producing, I suspect, jute string roots and putting it all together. So I brought a couple of the products I'm going to use. I'm just going to move these guys out of the way so I don't squash them. We've looked at the warbler already. Um, So, florist wire. I don't want to buy anything new. I bought too much stuff recently. I really have. Um, so this is florist wire. It's going to be really um, useful. It's just a, one of the thicker ones. It's great because you can buy it in 12 inch lengths. And I'm going to use this to form the basis of the roots. I haven't quite decided what I'm making the trunks out of yet. Um, yeah. I don't know, I'll think about it. If anyone's got any great ideas, I've got some, um, th they need to be quite big. And if I'm gonna put celly clay on them, it might just well be card, it might just be easier. Um, yeah. And then when I last did my tree, I used Daz and it just all cracked and fell off. It was awful. It was absolutely awful. So this is celly clay. It's, um, you can see it's like paper mache. It's just literally paper mache, I think. It's quite dusty. It's got bits in. So that's going to be... I want to kick and talk. That's going to be the main basis of all the bottom of it. Yep, my chair makes a mess. And then the rest of it is going to be in this box. Jute string. I had a bit of a... When I did Halo, I had a bit of a... Let's buy jute. I have thick jute string. I have thin jute string. Yay. I have string. I have string in um, well, tins. More string in tins. And this thick stuff is great. It's the thickest. You can actually make whole tree backdrop trees for your layout on this. If you just kind of cut it off there and splay the top out, it'll just hold some things. So yeah, very, very, um, very useful stuff, jute string. I use it a lot in modeling. Um, people used to use it to make grass, so you can also use it to make vines, grass, um, loads of stuff. So jute string, all from nicked from my mum, 
I think one of the tins was hers, or I got it off Amazon. Just a lot of dupe string off Amazon. Right, what have people been asking? I, um, so, Swamp Terrain for Wargaming. Oh, I can't sit too far forward. I get a glowy look from the lights. Um, Swamp Terrain for Wargaming, yes. This should be quite robust when it's done. There's going to be an awful lot of white glue holding it all together. And then, and while I'm trying to reproduce a specific prototype location, um, if it's a railway station and you're in the UK, then I would start with Scottish Ordnance Survey maps. They have all of the Ordnance Survey maps going back for ages and just start building up and look for photos. I do love looking for photos and researching. It's my favourite phase is this design phase, which is why we've got a whole session on it, because it's my favourite how do I do everything? What's the best product? Where's it all going to fit? That is just probably one of the things I love the most. So yeah, just see what you can find, historical societies. When I was doing um, my local one, uh, which was Dorridge, um, Birmingham Library had all of the plans. So I just went in and got a lot of the plans off Birmingham Library. So you just have to have a look. Where did you learn to do this, Cathy? Or are you just talented? I just made a lot of mistakes. You learn by trying and failing and then trying again. So I don't know, when I started out, it was all magazines and forums. I'm not even sure there was much of an internet. So I started back in modeling, did it as a child, but I started back in 2000. So I've been doing this for 20 plus years. So that might be why I know a few things because I've done so much variety. I've done military, I've done sci-fi, I've done railway. Um, and I've cross mashed a lot of them. I'm looking at Gundam a lot at the moment. And they just do their videos totally differently. They do that. Everything is just totally different in the Gundam world. And so it's a whole slew of new techniques to take on board and think about. Um, so yeah, I, I think it's just work out what you want and research the techniques, which is what I do. I plan what I want to see which techniques I need. Sewing thread for wispy roots and vines in the Dagobah scene. Yeah, 3.75 Hasbro, I can imagine that's perfect. I have actually just got some cotton down here on the side I use for things. Jumbo pepperami work for trees, honest. Yeah, I'm sure the um, bugs love it too. Um, I got some of that wire for tr some trees. This is thicker than the ones I, um, I would normally use for trees. Um, and I bought it by mistake, so... Um, I think it's going to be useful to use it up on this because it was too thick to twist with my fingers. Um, I don't even use it for Daz for cobbles, Holly, um, but that's what I originally bought it for. And it's Port de Norwich. I, I've got some cobbles on that I was, I even made myself a little roller. I just haven't got to that yet. Um, why not use real roots? I don't really have any. My garden is gravel shrubs, low maintenance, and I don't want to start pulling out my shrubs. I do have some upstairs, but they don't look right. And this is the thing. If I was doing like a tree that was generic, I would use real roots. And I have some and I've done that and it worked really well. But when I'm modelling an actual physical location from a movie, I'll try and copy as much as possible the style. And I think juice string is the nearest I can get to their style because I don't think they made them out of anything particularly real. I, I, I'm sure that... Some of the epoxy sculpts and magic sculpts and all that harden better than Daz Clay, but for this, the amount that I'm going to do, it would get very expensive. So I'm probably not going to do too much of anything that, you know, I'm just going to use Clay because I've got some already. Um, okay, so what else have we got? Sci-Fi Model Magazine. I don't think I know that one. Um, but I just literally submitted an article on Friday to Fine Scale Modeler I do work for Combat, so they would be the one I would go to. And so that was my Mandalorian build. And hopefully at some point they'll probably publish it. Um, I'm still writing the second one about the Tatooine build. And that was out at Christmas. So it was that one last year. <laughs> Succeeding when you feel like you don't have a full grasp of what you're doing is very satisfying. The problem I found when I went full time COVID was I suddenly had a deadline. So I'd be experimenting, it would go wrong. And then I was like, I need to get a video out and it hasn't worked so, but I don't want to ever stop experimenting because I think you're dead if you stop um yeah definitely what premiere chats 
which is pre-recorded video with a live chat. I can chat away while the video plays. That's interesting. What I was going to do is if I do any work off camera, Norman, I was probably going to do um, the just the sort of stuff I've done in between, um, especially when I get to painting because I can't really do my airbrush booth. Um, and I think because this is planning and a lot of it is chatting, um, it's a very different build video probably from some of the others um, because the others I'll have a task and I'll be a lot more focused. This, um, I could start cutting foam, but realistically, I think it's going to be a really weird noise that you don't want. Um, <sighs> right. Okay, so linen thread is good. I feel like no ideas are better than others within one's abilities. How do you decide what to make? I do whatever I've just seen on TV or a movie or I've got a big backlog of stuff I want to make. So it's just whatever gives me energy, whatever I want to create. It's about energy. Um, that is a great Mandalorian figure, isn't it? Ken, I'm glad to see you built it too. Um, yeah, um, thanks, Paul. Dioramas are just great experimentation grounds. Um, so for me, it's, it's a great way of sharing different information. If I just did my one New Haven layout upstairs, you'd never see how to model winter. So I just like doing that variety. Um, yeah, one to 24 tree. Um, what's a vintage collection diorama? Do you mean like a collection of vintage Star Wars? Um, I don't have any, so probably not. Um, I do a samurai one. I just did that from a droid. I do whatever I have. Um, um, so yes. And thanks, guys. So just to come back to actually putting some content in here rather than me reading the live chat, I still need to work out how to balance this. This is my first live stream. So just trying to work out how it's going to work on replay. Um, I'm finding it quite bitty trying to answer people's questions and then go back to this. So interesting. It's quite quite a juggling act, isn't it? Um, so I've got juice string, cellular clay over a card base. And the card base is because the cellular clay and stuff all shrink slightly. And it just allows that lightweight frame will shrink slightly with it. So it won't crack. If you put it over something really solid, then the cellular clay shrinks. It's more likely to crack because it's fixed at its ends. Um, and that's just because it's a water product. It's, it's paper mache, it's got water. So as it dries out, the water comes out of it and it shrinks. And that's a problem with a lot of acrylic types of products, water included. Um, the trees, I still need to work out what the thickness of the trunk needs to be, as in, I don't know what diameter one of these trees will be in 148 scale. I just need to get my head around that and think about it. And then um, it's, it's gonna be trees, the detritus is easy. I mean, we're coming into autumn. I'm just going to get loads of dead leaves and whiz them up in a blender. Um, very, very easy way to get most of the forest area. Sort of probably going to add in a bit of Woodland Scenics ground foam because they're great. Um, thanks, Quill OP, for coming. I'll see you next time. Um, yeah, I'm going gonna to have to think, though, about a number of things. One of which is someone just asked me how I'm going to do the hanging vegetation. Who said that? Dizzy. I'm going to probably use maybe the polyfiber or the cotton wool again because I'm thinking Spanish moss. I will also use jute string for some of it because it does um, flare out and just I probably should put that in camera shot. If you just do this, you can get it to flare out a little bit and it's useful. I'm going to have to see if it will flare out enough. But I'm thinking cotton wool or polyfiber, dyed, sprayed, dipped in some... The polyfiber doesn't take paint necessarily, but it's very easy to airbrush. Um, so I can just put that in and drape it. And what I'll probably do is a production line. I'll get some foil out or some plastic bags and I'll just cover it all and drape it. And I also need it for the X-Wing because the X-Wing is going to be covered in pond swamp weed all that stuff that's hanging off it and it's very very similar slightly different colors perhaps but very similar to the stuff that's hanging all over the swamp so loads and loads of hanging vegetation which is another reason this is a really exciting 
sort of build because it's, it's something you don't get to do that often is that sort of Spanish moss effect um, so that's definitely one thing and then really the other thing I was I thought quite a lot about was how to frame it and the angles um, it's it's interesting isn't it when you're doing these things when you start off you just do them and I, I used to plunk them on nicely arranged and I wouldn't think about the view line through and I wouldn't really think about photo lines you know I didn't need to think about how I was going to do a final video for YouTube I mean this is on live stream so it's not that it's going to get pulled together into a build video or anything but I'll still do a nice final um like summary shot for the last live stream so you can see the beautiful you know panning shots you get and all that kind of stuff with dramatic music and mm, I don't know I it's something that I've had to put a lot more thought into recently and one of the things that gets in the way a lot are backdrops and just lighting so I had this problem with the Clone Wars I wanted to evolve them I hadn't bought my and since then I've bought a a little it's a three-wheeled like dolly and you put your camera on it and the two wheels take it in an arc so it will, it will do a curve up till then if I wanted a rotating movement to it or something and I'm not very good at panning then I used to have to move it and when I moved it it was really in, I'm just wobbly um, you know very wobbly and one thing I realized was all these lights are very directional and when I moved it the shadows changed and I lined everything up out of my normal shot lines so the shadows fell as they did in the Clone Wars so that they look good and it was a nightmare it was just a nightmare getting some really good final shots when it was at a really weird angle just so that I could get all the shadows so you start thinking about how am I going to take photos of this so it, it may you may think oh um not that applicable to me but actually almost everything we do nowadays goes on social media if it's not a video it's still a photo so working out your frame and your scenery how are you going to take the photos how are you going to do the final videos almost I have to have that vision from the outset so for me um when I look at this I'm thinking definitely the front the front needs a, a wider view I don't want it just to be a really narrow like book nook type view in so I could put a little bit extra on this end just to sort of frame in that forest so it's a little bit darker and just have a little bit more of a back scene or I could just leave it with the trees and I'll probably just leave it with the trees um, again I could just finish off this end here get my hand you know just here with a little bit more backdrop coming around again just to frame it so when you take a shot that sort of direction there's not a draw in the way or something um, there may well be a bit of picture and I could almost cove that corner and it becomes important because if you want to take those photos and you're worried about a sharp straight line corner you may need to cove it just a little bit from the beginning and you need to know you're going to do that um, and put it in I probably won't because I'll just put a tree there in this diorama it's, it's much easier um, so yeah I think backdrop here backdrop here and then the height that becomes interesting most of my layouts are 16 inches so that's it's about there it's actually quite tall um, but you want to be able to get them in the photos but Star Wars is a movie it has a letterbox so it may be I do all the photos and videos in that letterbox cinematic it's not even 16 to 9 isn't it it's much narrower so again I may just have to think about that so I could take twigs and take them together I again I don't have many twigs so I probably might just go with card the trouble with using random natural arrangements is you have to use what twigs you can find and um, they're actually I think they'll be quite thick some of these so I'm worried they're not thick enough to get twigs um, yeah um, host, hasta, um, I like film recreations I like um, I like just getting every detail right you don't always but I like it 
I don't know, Norman. I don't think the um, LEDs in the base, Norman said, I don't think they shine up in the video. I just don't think there's that effect. It's a great effect, but I don't think it's in the scene. Um, Mark, best product for water effects, e.g. canal water, and it delaminated and came off as a sheet of rubber. That's nasty. Uh, for a canal, I just do a sheet of something flat without a grain, so an MDF or uh, something that's not gonna warp. Card will often warp, but if you seal it well, I've certainly used card. Um, and then I just put a very, very nice thick gloss layer on. Um, it can be a varnish. I like, it depends how big it is. Um, I like Tamiya because it's quite thick. Um, most acrylic varnishes are a bit thin. Um, it, any, you know, it could be a house varnish. For a canal, you, you're not needing a lot of ripples even. Uh, resin seems overblown because they're muddy, so you don't see down that far. And it just, I, I would avoid using resin um, if you can, if you don't need the depth. I only use resin where I need depth to the water because it's actually quite expensive to use and it creates a whole host of products. Um, so I just use a paint and varnish and then an acrylic gloss medium or something to do the ripples. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's almost like set building, isn't it? It is, Jess. Um, Dizzy the rain. I need, I'm actually thinking of revisiting my rainy day diorama, but no Photoshop this time. Um, try thin layer of clear varnish, definitely, definitely for that. Yeah, 2.35 to 1, that is so, so thin. But it means that you don't need to do as tall a diorama, it's certainly something to think about. I like to do extra height for the camera angle. You know, when you're doing a video, it's a pain because it goes off shot, but you know, it's like if you're doing a layout, if you set your sort of upper pelmet or valance or whatever you call it um, at the wrong height, then you either clip off your scene, which is what I've done, or you, um, you can just see all the lights and gubbins at the top and it's not low enough. Right. Yeah, I would paint acrylic paint for a canal and then put a gloss over it. Um, Everett had a good one about canal water. I think he used celery soup. Yeah. I think celery's a bit green. Um, most canal water around us is brown, mud. Um, sometimes there's a green hue. Depends how many boats have been through that day. Um, get a photo, look at it, match the paint colour exactly. And you can't go wrong. So, what time is it? Quarter past nine. I've been going an hour and a quarter. Um, I just want to, you know, check that this is useful. So, next steps. And we've talked about all the important things. We've talked about water. We did that at the beginning. Because I'm using that foil covered foam, I think it's gonna be a foil, a paint layer, just like I was talking for the canal. A layer of a gloss product, which may be a UV resin. I've a little bit left somewhere that, um, I got this from Green Stuff World. Uh, it's a UV resin. It probably wouldn't go that far, there isn't much left. Um, I don't think a normal 3D printing one would work, but a UV resin, and then I can set it up. So it will be a resin, but it's gonna be really thin. And I'm not gonna put any color in it, it's literally for the shine. Then there's the mist layer. Um, and once I've got that mist layer water done, I'll do the resin or whatever, the paint early on, but I might put the resin in right towards the end. I can use that same resin then in other patches because actually a lot of this is quite glossy and damp and you want it to be at least a semi-gloss. You don't want all of this to be too matte. When I look at my halo diorama over here, it's really, really matte. And for these, I want a damp feeling. And there's gonna be a striation of color. So this bottom section is gonna be a slightly different color to further up. Like you see a tide mark, for example. Um, and then, I, someone just suggested that I use a base of the trees, I could use a plaster mixture to make them. If you look at the pictures, they're really open. They're, they're not solid bottoms of trees. There's a lot of light, well, light dinge. There's a lot of viewpoints coming through them. Um, I'm just, perhaps if I swap back to this photo slideshow for a second, um, you can just see that and go through it again. Um, and you can see through a lot of them. 
it's not as solid. It's so I'm thinking layers and layers of dupe string with PVA glue will build up that layering that I want. Martin, um, that's Mark Lynn of Sweden, John. Yeah, he um, he does a great scene on using toilet paper glue and layers of gloss varnish. Everyone asks me, why don't you do it? And I'm like, because he did such a great video. I don't need to do it. Just go watch his, it's brilliant. Um, yeah, so Dizzy Plaster. I will probably use um, something over the top, maybe like Cellu-Clay instead of plaster because it's um, probably just what I'm gonna use. Where did I find the wolf print? It's a printed obsession print. And I think I got it from my mini factory and he has loads of different types of wolves um, for, I think they were for sale at the time. They were quite old, been around a while. He has some really nice mythical creatures. Um, and people keep putting messages on and retracting. So I hope they weren't rude, we'll see. Um, so I'm going to take a tip of mice. Yeah, and wire. I think wire is going to be, I, I got the florist wire out. Obviously the trees start further up, so I do need to, um, you know, put something to hold them. So there'll be some wire through that dupe string as well. Now I just saw one of the photos go past and it suddenly occurred to me, um, R2D2 has a light on him. Hmm, that's a thought. Do you think I should light R2D2 up? Let's just put some context on that. Right, now you have the light there. Let's just go back to here for a sec. This, oops. Oh, I probably have to press the button. So this is Yoda. Yoda? He's about, I think he's shorter than R2-D2. So R2-D2, he's about Luke. There, is he about there on Luke? So he's about that tall. So I've got something that's, um, I cleaned out my extractor fan earlier and it's just, I epoxied my fingers with loads of black gunk all over them. Um, so that's R2-D2 height. If I want to put a light in him, that's quite, that's quite a lot of light. Yeah. Um, yeah. I just, mm. I have ideas. I have certainly ideas on how I could light R2. I don't know who saw my droid video. Not many people, I have to say, because YouTube has delighted in telling me how none of my subscribers wanted to watch my droid video. Um, if ever you do videos, you'll know how much YouTube delights in saying, this video is doing really badly. It's the worst video you've put out in ages. Uh, YouTube just loves doing that. Um, and so I've got, R2D2 is gonna be stuck down. He's not gonna be movable. So I could easily put an LED up um, and, but I, I can't do changing colors necessarily. Um, yeah. And actually I like, Kim says, um, I might like the whole R2 model, but leave transparent parts for light. I just did that on my droid where the whole of his head was transparent, but I painted everything except the eye. So, I was able to, um, you know, just put, um, I just realized my hands look really big in there. Um, so I was able to put, um, you know, a light through and I used LEDs. I was really pleased how that came out. I used, um, I can't remember if it was the Anycubic clear resin or the, I'm using Cyriotech blue clear and it's a really nice one on my Pupoli Phenom. And it is easy at that scale to, when I model him, I just need to remember, because it's so hard to drill into resin easily, is to just leave a bit of space to put an LED in. Timbersurf mentions that I could use fiber optics. I've only tried them a couple of times and I've never felt they were as bright as an LED. I've never really, really been as impressed with them as I'd like. And ever people use them really successfully, so I wonder if I just had bad fiber optic fiber and whether there's a better fiber out there. Um, but it didn't really produce a lot of light at the end. I felt I was really underwhelmed. Um, yeah, dizzy there. Algorithm really does suck. And thank you, Roy. Do you know, I wasn't planning to do the droid. It was one that was snuck in because Boilei Hobby Team, he does some amazing LED stuff. If you want to see LEDs, go look at Boilei's. And he, he asked a bunch of us to collab. So it kind of slotted in and it pushed back 
a gladiator hulk build which i start tomorrow um so um yeah that's going to be a fun one fred i think lighting really does depend on scale i actually just find i mean i've got leds that are so small i can hardly see them um and i would tend to use those because they just put such a bright light if you look at the size of the ones in my um droid they put a huge amount of light out and they're they're not even the smallest i've got they were the next size up they're pink and um they were just i think it was one by 1.4 millimeters so that's titchy by titchy you know it's nothing um but i've not i'm gonna have to try fiber optics again because everyone raves about them and um oh timber says, says you can buy leds that cycle through four different colors i am gonna have to look for those but can you get them in a small enough size but actually does it matter because i'm gonna have all r2d2 needs to be is slightly bigger than the led um yeah oh michael i'm sorry it doesn't recommend me um and you know I, for years i missed luke towns i don't know why I think there's a notification bell that has changed. It used to be you're notified, it sent you all the time. Now you can, if you hit it and do selected versus all, it will it will decide for you whether you want to see it, someone was saying. Um, so yeah, Admiral, that's very sweet. I am, do you mean an STL? Because I'm gonna print it um, here in clear resin. Um, gold foil tape for the light it'll be an led i think um i do just because um they're so easy to use i've got a standard now um so um what i like to do is for anything that has 12 volt leds you i've got a 12 volt power pack that sits here you can buy the connectors that the 12 the jack goes in that standard like jack that all of your electronics like your laptops are done in and i just wire those in and just wire them straight up they're really good if i'm doing an arduino you add a capacitor and you can do a step down well i think they may even take 12 volts some of them um, and so you can wire your arduino in as well um, but you can get so many great um, led strips that just light um, but if you want to do RGB in effects, you need to have an Arduino. Um, for everything else, I tend to use a USB. And I've got some, you can buy them on Amazon, little micro USB ports, and you can plug it in. And you just wire the two power ones, which are the outer two, in, and it's a 5-volt circuit. And I've got some step-down buck converters, B-U-C-K, buck. And they go from 5 volts to 3.3 volts, which is about standard for most LEDs. So you can use them just to power LEDs with that and you don't even need a resistor. So that is now my standard. I'm trying to stick to that because it means I don't need hundreds of different cables. So my Tomb Raider's got two USB cables hanging out the back. Well, if I'd been sensible, I could have just left two sockets and use those cables elsewhere. Um, so overhead lighting. It could be LED through a piece of plexiglass. My thought on that, and I was debating this earlier, and I think it's a really good thought process to have, if you cover a diorama, you can't take photos from the top. And I like top-down photos sometimes. So it would have to then be removable so that you can get the angle from above. Because people really like to see a top-down angle of a diorama. They just, it, it, especially if it's an article as opposed to a video, it helps them understand how everything fits together. So it's a view, it's definitely a viewpoint, um, but you can make it removable. I, has to, I don't think R2 would be that bad to wire. I think you just have to make it hollow, which you do generally for printing anyway, and it will be big enough and you can just shove a, a wire through the base and just shove an LED up. I think it would be quite simple, actually. Admiral, that'd be great. Um, do me a message afterwards. I don't know how you message on YouTube, actually, directly, but... Um, yeah, find me on Instagram. That's what I tend to look at. Um, huh, I like it. 115 chat, 115 likes. Wow, I can't believe 115 people are interested in um, Star Wars. Who would have thought that many people? Um, 
I don't think the light affects her as hard as people think because it's such a small LED and all of the gubbins can be underneath because the wires are quite long. All you need to do is literally run something, a little hole underneath you can, you know, get to, um, just coming through your base and the wire runs to here and the gubbins are kind of hidden in the backdrop over here or over here would be better actually it's the back of the layout the the leaves will the roots will come forward there'll be a hollow space you can cut a hole in the back of the backdrop here put battery electronic gubbins whatever it is in here so I put in my micro USB a 5 volt to 3.3 volt but converter two wires LEDs over here job's done it would be that simple honest always takes the longest bit of electronics and the traveler was just beyond difficult it didn't work it didn't work it took me weeks it was a nightmare um but yeah the thing is it goes this way the light um so you might just angle him a little bit off center so you can see him from the front as well um that's great admiral um that'd be perfect thanks that'd be really really good i haven't printed him yet so not a problem laser pen <laughs> I love wild ideas. I know. I'm, I have to say, though, it is nice not to have direct messaging on YouTube because I don't get weird messages then. Um, I get weird chat comments, but they're public. So, you know, people aren't as bad. Some of the stuff you get sent personally can be a bit weird. Um, but yeah, but I've got a very accessible email. I'm very accessible because it's a business. You can find me all over the place. Um, Hi, Patrick. You missed me talking a lot and a lot of people chatting. So we're looking at, for those catching up now, I'm doing a Dagobah Swamp. This is my first live stream, so it's a little bit of a test stream, and I'm talking a lot about planning. So this week, we're not gonna be doing much. Next week, I think, we'll, well, I'll ask you whether you want them weekly, or whether you want them more spread out than that. It really depends what commitment people want. I don't want to burden people with live streams. I was wondering whether every two weeks would be better than every week just so it's not but then people get confused which week it is um so yeah it, it's a hard debate let me know what you think about timing on live streams i don't want to flood my channel with live streams and i'll cap this one at two hours regardless because i've seen some live streams that go on for four hours and i've started watching them but just the number's too big in my head so i think two hours is enough and I will peter out of talking at some point. I used to be able to talk for hours, but I don't get enough practice now. Um, so, yeah, um, next week, next time, let's just say for now, um, I think that I'll probably start on the trees and the X-Wing, one of the two, because, um, you know, it's, it's one of those things that I... I before I even start the base, quite often I build all the parts to it because you need to know how big things are. So I can't build my water area till I have a very good idea, which is why I've printed it already, how big my X-wing is. Because if it doesn't fit, it doesn't fit and you've screwed up your whole diorama. So I almost need to build these trees and get a rough idea of some of this and get R2-D2 there. And, and put these together before I start on the base. Now, I don't need to completely finish the X-Wing, um, but I do want to have trimmed the supports. I won't do that on a live stream probably because it's really boring, trimming supports and filing. Um, but it, you know, it's something to do while you're chatting, I guess. Um, yeah. So, I don't, are the navigation, I don't think the navigation lights are flashing on it, the X-Wing when it's up and down. Um, Night, Tim. Um, yeah, I, I don't think you'll miss that much more. Um, so weekly, I'm just wondering whether weekly is too much. So I would like to know, would people choose in, tune in for weekly? It's a big commitment every Sunday to tune in for a couple of hours or whatever day. I mean, I have to say, I don't watch live streams live because I'm just never there for most of them. Um, but well, Lane, have I ever modeled fire? Not really. I've got an explosion planned. It's about fourth or fifth up. I, I've got a lot planned out. Um, so it's going to be an explosion. That'll be good. Um, oh, I'm glad, Dizzy, that you like the live stream. I, I wasn't sure. I feel like I can get a lot more questions in. Um, 
So I, I do actually have a cup of tea, Daniel, but I haven't got around to drinking it. Um, and I, I still haven't worked out the balance on this. I'd like to do more modelling. And this is always going to be a talky one. It's the planning. Um, but... I, I was actually wondering whether monthly would be better for live streams to not flood the channel. And, oh, um, I haven't thought about, Paul, I haven't thought about incorporating smell. I don't want my house to smell like a swamp. Thank you. Um, laser, I'm with you. I think monthly gives me an opportunity because you've got to bear in mind some of the time the whole desk is just full of other stuff and moving it all aside is a while. Um, yeah, it's a good way of doing it, Holly. Thanks, Rex. Yeah, um, I think once a month does sound good. It's, um, yeah, it's, it's one of those things. Uh, minimum two weeks. And it's interesting to see. I am going to continue the railway layout digger. Two reasons I don't. One, it's not YouTube friendly. Uh, the loft isn't a great place. And it's like an oven for most of the summer. So I just can't get up there. Um, it's it's so difficult. Um, I've, I'm too far along with it for it to make a good YouTube video. Because you need to do YouTube from beginning to end. And most of it's half done. Um, I think I've got YouTube. I think I've got Super Chats enabled. Um, and this is OBS because it's a lighter on your... Mac and my Mac's churning like mad on this with Streamlabs. But I've got a couple of the Streamlabs widgets. widgets. Um, thanks, Matt. I'm, I'm finding it really enjoyable to chat, but I'm not sure how great it is to be on the receiving end of it. Um, film the crafting first, then stream it on a live feed so you can talk and answer questions. I think that's a really interesting way, and I, I can see that that would be a good format. It just eats into the week when I'm doing other videos. So if it was once a month, that would work better. And do Q&A. So that's, um, Patrick, I think it's a good point. Is the live stream to answer questions? I mean, for now, this is a great one for live streaming because I'm planning. It's all just about asking myself questions, asking you questions. How am I going to do things? So I was lying in bed at 4 a.m. this morning, as you do, thinking, how am I going to do the trees? How am I going to do this? And someone else said to me, um, you know, try not to model too much because it's quite hard in a live stream. And I realised that. So I can't look at the chat with the speed it's going past and come and look at this and model realistically because I miss things. On the other hand, if the chat's, sort of, you know, fairly quiet for a bit or two, um, I did have a video on here and I've managed to lose it somewhere along the way. But I could easily put some videos up of stuff I've been working on. And I was thinking of doing that um, for the X-Wing, just because it's, I'm, I'm not doing an airbrush booth moment. I mean, I'd be with the mask because it's going to get sprayed in lacquers. And laser, I want to keep it special, definitely. Um, yeah, mangroves really are um, upside down trees, aren't they? I love the way they splay out at the bottom. And then those little aerial roots that come up through the water are really cool um i think once a month will give me enough time to actually produce something and think about it um and scrap line great to see you here too um and hi alan and Sherilyn. nice to see you from new zealand i nearly went there at the start of lockdown they locked down two days before i was due to fly thankfully i got the money back so there we go um, and I'm, I'm doing it on video link, the convention I was going to. I was going to be a guest speaker at the convention. I'll be doing it on video link instead because I just said, look, it's, we won't be open again by next Easter. Um, I think weekly would be hard work, Tim, Timber. And if it would, um, if it was the only thing I was doing on the video front, I get that. But actually, I mean, I watched some Michael Rinaldi live streams and he does more, he just pulls out a model and weathers it. And it's so much less... It's still a lot of prep for him, but it's so much less size. My big problem is fitting it in here in video quality. The lighting, I couldn't get the halo tree earlier to light. If I'd prepared this, I would have got a video done of my halo tree with, you know, all of the stuff that I wanted to show. Can't do that. So it might go on the front for that five minutes while you're waiting for the stream to start. Um, yeah, and I think COVID's right. Um, um, 
the, it, it will just end up ignoring chat for extended periods of time, which is fine if you don't have a lot of questions. But if you've got a lot of people and it's flying past, and if I come out of the streaming software then and go into YouTube so I can scroll back, I actually crashed my streaming software twice earlier, so I'm a bit worried about doing that. Um, yeah, I like that YouTube. You are all very excited and, um, and, and chatty, definitely. Um, and I do worry. Um, trees, why? Yeah, I might, I might bring some trees along just to, or what I'll probably do is bring them in pieces because I won't have them finished and I can bring them along and show you almost like a demo of what I've been doing for a brief period. Um, so yeah, that, that's one of the things. And what I really want to do with this is talk to people. Um, a lot, I've seen a lot fly past and I know I haven't answered everyone's questions. And I've said, please put your questions on again, but I haven't given them a lot of time because they have flying past and there's loads more coming. And if you were to ask me the same question in a couple of weeks, say the prototype modeling, I probably would go into more detail about it if it's a quieter period and be able to give you a much better answer. Um, yeah, and I, yeah. And, and it is a live stream. It's a very different thing to a curated video. Um, the other thing is I would, if I did this as recorded in the week and then put it up on a live stream, I'd produce a final making a video you could all watch from beginning to end and would go on the channel. And it would just give you an opportunity to see it come together as a YouTube um, video because I do zone out and I've noticed this quite a lot with the one or two live streams I've seen. People are either modeling or they're talking and they're not doing both. And it, it is really difficult. And the point of a live stream is not to do another YouTube video because I do those. It's to talk to people and answer questions, so yeah. I am amazed that um, so many people got up, Admiral, from New Zealand to see this in the morning. But having said that, I do a lot of my social media first thing. I mean, I wake up in the morning, I play, I should confess this, Diggy's Adventures and then Star Trek timelines to get them dailies done for the day. Because not that I'm addicted or anything to mobile phone games. And then I go through all my social media and Instagram. And I say, well, Instagram is work because I'm a creative. So I'm looking at creative vision. That's my excuse. But I love looking through and I, my stream varies. It's very much a inspiration stream and it changes on what I'm interested in, you know, I'm looking at at the time. Um, do I take my dioramas to any shows? Could I put the chat in slow mode? Okay, right, let's take this one at a time, so I'm doing it. Um, Mark says every two weeks. I have to think about just if I'm going to do it in the week, whether I can fit that in with doing a video every two or three weeks as well. I didn't, I, I don't know about slow mode. I could, and it may, it may help. I think if there's a couple of people that are answering some of the questions as well, it's not so bad. Um, Shane Morley is cancelled. You take your dioramas to any shows. I haven't really, because I've just not been to any shows since I've been doing this. I was planning to do a lot more of that, but a lot of the model railroad shows, I, you know, I only have a couple of railroad dioramas. I was trying to do an exhibition layout, but it's stalled. Um, yeah, if anybody wants to be a moderator, let me know, um, because that would be really helpful, because I don't really have anybody of my friends who are into modelling that I could ask to do this. So it's really people like you guys that I know from doing this online would be the people. Um, the more of the lives you do, the numbers will go up and the chat will fly. You'll need some mods as the Wallies will come along. Oh, bless the Wallies. They'll always be there with us. We can't lose them. Um, does sound like question and answer is the way to go. I listened to Mel the Terrain Tutors and someone was sort of commenting, yeah, the Q&A are okay, but I'd like to see you do some more modeling. So I think it's a bit of a mix. So I think if I was to do a pre-recorded bit of video, because I do want to do the Dagobah Swamp and use that as inspiration to chat about things. And I've been wanting to get that project off the ground for a while. So maybe a bit of video, maybe a bit of going in the background really, and a bit of quite, you know, question and answer would be good. Um, so, night Norman, or late lunch for you. Good afternoon. Um, I know it slows your chat down because it makes people wait before they can type into the comment. I, I can still get through slow mode quite quickly, I have to say. Um, so, yeah, I noticed Auckland had gone back into full lockdown. Um, my, the only thing I'll say about lockdown is plenty of modelling time. 
It's good for that. Thank you, Digger. Yeah, um, if you're on Instagram or Facebook, drop me a line or email me or something. That would be really good because I need to work out how to set moderators up. <laughs> yeah, Admiral. Incidents. Um, you just need talking points. Oh, you two, please do. Yeah, just let me know. Um, yeah, I have a lot of incidents. Not all of them make it onto video. Um, so, for example, my droid. I... Um, I actually spent two days trying to work out how to wrap styrene very badly and just thought, I'll use a glue bottle. It'll be easier. I didn't get where I wanted to. Um, and it's really, really sometimes quite demoralising because you just want to get on. But it worked in the end the other way. Alan and Sherilyn. A thunder and lightning cloud for the um, railroad model. Um, that's really great. Um, I've seen some really good ones done. It's a lot of um, more American railroads have had them than I've seen over here, but yeah. Um, video in the background, Q&A voices over the top with breaks to highlight certain parts of the build. Well, some of the video, I could stream a, two or three different videos and just put them on repeat until the questions peter out on them. Uh, thanks, Digger. It's incredibly hard to make while well, chatting and expecting to fall within a specific time crusade for video upload. I believe you have to, I really do. This was my first one and uh, Luke APS said to me, don't try and model anything. So uh, Luke from Geek Gaming, if you don't know him, does terrain, um, great guy. And I took his advice and didn't try and um, model anything. But anyway, my first one was always going to be planning. And I brought a little demo of the halo tree, but the lighting in here, I actually didn't have my room lights on to start with. And I literally, if I do this, I, I was like glowing like this the whole time. It was horrendous. Um, yeah yeah um, is my tea still warm? no but I always drink it cold I leave it an hour before I drink it anyway and it's um, pearl jasmine Chinese tea so it, at this point in the day I've put the pearls in in the morning so it's mostly just cold water now um, I like the idea Jez yeah no, I think that will work really well. The other thing is, it's really hard to, it's a really small thing, because I've got like loads of different screens up, to, it doesn't take long before chats kind of come off the bit I can see. And it's no better on the YouTube one, I think, if you can put it on a separate page. Um, yeah. What's your favourite season? I hate autumn. Let's just go with that. I've tried autumn a couple of times and I have crashed and burned every time. I just get the colours wrong. I'm not a fan. I like winter. I like snow and ice. I really love the bare skeletons of the trees. Um, I like the freshness of spring. and I like summer because it's just a nice time. But autumn pff, or fall for the people who aren't used to autumn. Pff, no, just pff. I did an awful set of videos for MRVP, which I don't think they've even aired yet. And I did them two years ago, which is crap. I just, I couldn't get it to nail. I redid it completely by the end. Um, scrap line, explosion. I have a halo warthog on the side that's massive. Um, I mean, when I say massive, it's, you know, this sort of size. I'm trying to work out how to suspend it in midair. It's from the latest reveal thing from E3 or whatever it was that came out. It's actually the multiplayer and it's coming off a cliff. I'm going to do that. So there'll be an explosion so that will be good. Um, um, yeah, I, I, I can't, Patrick, I can't see, my, from having done this today, it's been great. It's been invaluable. I realise that actually modelling isn't going to be that great. What I might be able to do is like a five or ten minute demo. And actually I could swap this back so I'm bigger. So I'm not this little person in the corner. Um, I could do like a five or ten minute demo of something but I think that's about the limit um, and yeah I, I I could just do one um, yeah I could just so Dizzy you're a jewelry maker beautiful I love watching dioramas I've just been watching North of the Border because I found him through the collab and he does loads of stuff in clay and I've just I've just binge watched loads of his stuff um, I draw yeah, I do a lot of filming and the video quality is much better. For a start, I can do it in 4K. I'm only streaming 1080, but I can do it in 4K. And then I could, at the end, 
put out a really good YouTube video. Um, and when I do in 4K, I can then grab stills for articles and things. Um, oh, I'm sorry, Holly, you had to work and you didn't get clapped. Um, I actually went unemployed in the middle of it as a, I went to doing this full time, but as I don't earn much money, it's, it's kind of a hobby job. I'm going to make money. One day I'm going to make money. I think this month gone was actually the first one. I actually made more money than I spent, but it was a one off. Um, having said that, I always said accountancy, which is what I did before was my first career, not my only career. Dennis, how long have I been doing this? Um, I did it as a kid. I came back 20 years ago into modeling when I went to Mevagissi on holiday and I saw World of Model Railways and I got back into Model Railways. I've always done sci-fi, but recently going full time, trying to build the channel, I've wanted to do smaller dioramas and I like doing different things. And I'd hit a wall with my Model Railroad and videoing it. So it just seemed natural to move into a wider variety of stuff. Um, yeah, Luke, oh, Gambody is awful. I have, this is coming later next year. Um, probably just because I've got most things planned this year. I did a rainy day diorama and everyone sort of said, oh, it's Photoshop. And I'm going to do the 25th anniversary T-Rex on there, which is the T-Rex coming through the fence and squashing the kids from Jurassic Park under their Jeep. And it's raining when it does it. So I'm going to do it with Sam Neill holding the flare. So he's going to have a flare in his hand. And that I've already owned that Gambody um, print. And it's a great print. The T-Rex detail is beautiful. I'm just, I was thinking about it today. So I was just looking at my forward prints of what I need to put on the 3D printer. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's going to be fun. But I've got other stuff. I'd like to do Legion. They've got Mass Effect Legion. He's my favourite character in Mass Effect. Um... Yeah, I, Dennis, I'm with you. I, I like the ice cold, but I also like the um, warmth. I'm just happy whatever the weather is, as long as it's not pouring with rain. Do you know, you say painting might be a good live stream option. Um, I can imagine, um, I can imagine, but actually the trouble is you're always looking down, not looking at the chat. So I think having a video playing and talking about it is a great idea. So a few of you have said that and it's the, it's, I think that'll be a real lifesaver. Um, so Brotwell Lane, after a thunderstorm, look at loads of photos. I love um, the, um, so where it goes dark, where it's damp and it goes light on tarmac, that kind of effect. So that water where it's just beginning to dry off, it's a beautiful effect, not easy to do in scale. Um, but yeah, Jim. My mum's a lemon and ginger person. Um, yeah, it's a great combination. Love the smell. Um, so Brockwell, definitely thunder. Great one. Just that clear air. You can almost smell it. And I've missed a couple there. I don't think I can scroll back up. Oh, I can. Right. Yeah, I think that, um, Petrick, quick demos. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I love watching other people too, Jez. I, I just love watching YouTube. I watch it every night. Um, I haven't seen Sammy Modelbow, who's doing nice things in 1/160th. Yeah, and I love military. 135th is a lovely scale. Um, oh, yeah, it's a great place, Finnis, in that world of model railways. But it was 20 years ago I went there last. Um, I adjust Petrick my scale depending on the model. So Gundam is always going to be one one forty four for one hundredths because that's what it is. I do it to fit like this. I wanted this size diorama. It's A two. I did the scale that made the X wing about a third of it. That was my view, and it was one one forty eight. So um, uh, Admiral, it was Photoshop. Um, so yeah. I like six scale for people if you're doing detailed people things. I like 187th for getting terrain in. I like S scale for a mix between O. I like all the scales. I like changing them, but you have to get your eye in. It's quite hard to swap scales all the time because you, you get the detail level wrong sometimes. On Gundam, you, your chips look too massive. Um, you know, yeah. Admiral, it was um, 
photoshop the rain because I couldn't work out how to do it um, but I mean it, you don't see it when you look out a window normally is half the problem um, that is definitely half the problem that rain isn't really that visible we're conditioned by movies that tell us there's rain by putting oversized drops on um, yeah so most of my crafting is in fine leather products Ooh, it's nice to have these many times streaming um, thanks Asta it's, it's been great to do some streaming and I'm going to stop I said I'd do two hours so I'll stop in about five or ten minutes um, but I think we've come to a consensus on what it's going to be like going forward which is actually the whole point of this first one um, so yeah um, oh Finiton YouTube can be an addiction and um, you can get all sorts of other stuff on it's just it's just brilliant that's the trouble I just stay way too late hi Les Jez the, the after rain smell is called petrichor didn't know that which is a word as lovely as the smell just love that smell if you could bottle that why oh, you'd make a fortune um oh yes starting building Gundam um and DRNGLV mm, yeah 68 it's in a pale grey on black and I, I just can't quite make out some of the small letters um the names so yeah I've started building Gundam I had this one in my stash for years and I built it and I've now bought quite a few so you will see some coming out very good um dragons though I like dragons I haven't painted one I could really could do it um yeah I would like to do some book nooks actually Raverson um I really would like to do some book nooks I bought some book nook carcasses and haven't found something small enough to fit in them yet um so yeah I think they're a nice size I don't actually have any bookcases I've run out of space they've been turfed down they've got dioramas and storage on them now um do you know the rain diorama finiton was probably the first one that did really well on my channel um that was a full diorama and that's what encouraged me to go into doing more full diorama builds because that one did quite well and I'd noticed a, a lot of the newer people coming in were doing that and the older sort of guard like me I've been doing this for donkey's years were doing more tutorial style um so I think every time people come in YouTube changes and you have to morph with it so this is my current incarnation it may well change but what I felt was lacking and the reason for this live stream really was any tutorial content because you try and keep your YouTube videos so short that really I, I feel like I lose a lot and I can expand them for the patrons and I do and they get more step by step so that's what my patrons get is a behind the scenes or an extra video when there isn't an early release and they've been step by steps and I'm going back to rewriting my ebooks so they'll be getting a lot of step by steps on that as well um yeah actually Petra has a good point someone and I could say this someone I was watching on live stream said please write question in capitals before a question you want me to answer and if I miss it please say it again um and Mel has some google document everyone has to look at but I thought of another screen is quite scary at the moment um oh yes the thought I hate milk the thought of being pelted with milk is disgusting oh um yeah thanks digger yeah demo techniques for beginners I thought by doing a um diorama I'd be able to do some of that demoing but actually just the thought now and I was worried about it modeling live and talking it's very hard to look down and look up um that's the trouble and you need to look at what you're modeling sadly um um yeah Admiral the trouble is everyone's done it and everyone's so Admiral said with the default book nook be the chaps in the trash compactor from Star Wars yes but everyone's done it the same for the trench run um everyone's done it so there will be other ones and with Mando and a few others I I did one boy that actually beat me to it though about doing little Grogu down trying to mend it but boy that beat me um yeah there we go um MH X existence um I used to do the mini cafes and someone came up to me at a show once and went hey mini cafes stop doing them and walked off and I was like hmm they divided people a little bit too much um and yeah there we go <laughs> they really did um I the thing I enjoy doing um Finiton is looking at all the different strands of modeling and trying to 
interact between the two. I actually look at little cosplay as well. They have some great ideas in cosplay. Um, yeah, it's it's a good way of um, just um, finding other streams. I learned a lot about modelling and stuff from um, modelling casting and stuff like that from them. Um, that's a good idea to post links. I actually have a set of links of STLs. They probably won't go up tonight because I'm not really a late, late night owl. But um, I'll put them up tomorrow. I'm going to just edit the starting and end off this and um, just you know shrink it to that five minutes at the beginning. That I hate sitting through on other people's live streams. And um, put this to be a um, sort of video live. And then I'll put the links and everything on tomorrow of all the stuff that people have um, talked about. Um, um, so Luke, I'm going to be writing some ebooks, which will have the more like how to's, the sort of technique side. Um, dioramas, it's interesting. Model railway shows, perhaps, but they're mostly sci-fi dioramas. I did get invited to hold Comic Con, and then we got COVIDed, so I would have taken dioramas to Comic Con. And I've got a lot of the ones I've used to do demos on that can just sit there and people can touch static grass and see how tough it is and have a play and see which one they like. And um, so, oh, Ben, you've got two minutes. Just, oh, have you actually? Two minutes, you can make a stupid comment. Oh, it's 10.01. Right. Um, in that case, I said I'd cut this off at two hours. I think live streams that drag on, drag on. So been through planning i'll get something out for a month's time probably i'll probably do the second week of the month so it's around the 12th um it depends on each month so i think monthly sounds about right for me i'll probably do second week of the month so it will be the 10th of october for the next one and we'll be looking at trees and things like that and getting those together or perhaps the x-wing just depends i'm doing a lot of painting coming up so i might just get the x-wing prepped and painted at the same time um so yeah i think it'll be four weeks hasta every it'd be once a month just because you know some weeks have got five um they've got mini kathy's via model Lou. you can get a mini me you can actually, if you want to get a mini me, you can go to Molyu, which is a UK firm, and they will print you a mini Cathy. He has a scan of me from Worley, and he asked if he could sell it as part of the Great Model Railway Challenge judges. So you can get me. Um, so there we go. I'm kind of, you know, sort of posed, but, you know, and I've got really tall boots on because he prints me on support. So it looks like I've got, like, Iggy Stardust boots, but they look really good. Um, right. So I'm going to stop it now. So I've got a lovely closing screen that gives you like a minute. And um, thank you everybody for tuning in. This was my first and I've really appreciated the support. Um, it's quite nerve wracking, sort of like just starting something like this and you don't know who's going to be chatting to you and what the questions are going to be and how well it will go down. So thank you so much everybody for being so generous, for listening to this. And if you're listening to it again or on repeat and you've got any questions, just drop them in the comments below. And I always look at my questions and unless you've made a rude one, I generally answer them um, as well. So, yeah. So thank you, everybody. I am going to hit the out button. So good night, everybody. Or good morning if you're in New Zealand. Have a great Monday if you're in New Zealand. Have a great evening for the rest of us. Take care. Bye. Thank you.